Hi, this is Jeff Blauett, technical agronomist with Cooperative Farmers Elevator. And on this week's Field Friday segment, we kind of talk about where we're at stage-wise on these crops, uh, where things are today. You know, we're getting right to the end of the point of where it's worth throwing any management practices at these corn and soybeans. So I thought I'd look at where we are, kind of show you what we're looking for as far as when is it time to just say, you know what, we're far enough, we're, we're done. Um, so let's take a look at some of this development on this crop. So for corn, uh, you know, we typically talk about fungicide applications, you know, we're, we're done with that basically on most of the corn, but it's right around tassel or shortly thereafter, kind of that R1 stage. So where are we at today with most of this corn? So I've got a few ears here of some different development. These are both actually, or all three of these are actually out of the same plot, but I'll highlight what stages they're in and show you where we're at with some of this stuff. So if we look at kind of this ear, uh, what the silks look like, and then what the grain development looks like, this is probably what I would say is an early R2. Uh, we've got some blisters starting to show up, pollination is done, the silks are kind of done their thing, this is, this is what it looks like before you husk it back, but they're starting to turn brown, but there's a lot of you know, lighter blonde color to it yet. This would be an R2, an early R2. Um, this would probably be getting towards an R3. Um, you got pretty well brown silks. Uh, the kernels are starting to get some color to them. Uh, they started to fill out uh, some for sure. So this would be kind of what you'd say is the end of the fungicide window. We have brown silks. Um, and we're like I say, we're both mostly past this today. Um, so that's what that looks like. And then the next stage of development here, this is a, this is a full R3. Uh, we've got, you know, probably, there's not much for uh, anything besides milk in these kernels, but they're getting close to getting some dough. R3 is a solid brown silk, generally. The kernels have yellow color to them, but if you smash them, they're full of milk yet. So this would be, uh, you know, this is for sure the end of the fungicide window. That prior one was an early R3. This is probably a late R3. Um, I don't have any out here yet. There probably is some around, but an R4 is really where management's probably done of any kind. Um, at R3 yet, we're kind of done with the fungicide, but if we've got insects out there, we've been seeing a run of spider mites lately, uh, maybe some corn aphids, especially as we get west in our territory. Um, there's still some value in managing those with an insecticide. Um, there's a lot of dry matter accumulation that has to happen to these yet. And I think if there's an infestation out there, you know, we've had some recent rains go through that give us a little bit more optimism that the crop's going to have, you know, some potential yet. These are the ones that would be kind of insecticide only um, for the most part. Micronutrients or foliar feed would be fine too because there's a lot of stuff that has to happen here. It's just we're done with fungicides on something like this. The other thing I would mention is if this would happen to be silage or taken early, we've got to watch our pre-harvest intervals on the insecticides we might consider using because we're probably within that window where there's very few options if we were going to manage those if it was silage. If it's green, obviously we've got time yet. Um, so that's kind of where we're at on corn. Uh, you know, we'll look at some of the corn and how it's pollinated and how the ears are developing here in a future episode, but that's kind of where we're at stage-wise and what we're looking for when we make some of these timing calls and when it's just time to say we're done. Um, on soybeans, we've got a lot of variability in soybeans as well. You know, we had a lot of beans planted in April. Some, of course, were back to a more normal time, maybe around that first week or early second week of May when some of the beans were planted. Uh, so there's some stage differences there. Um, we're looking at R3 as kind of our target fungicide time on beans. Most of the beans are beyond that also, so the fungicide time on beans is really winding down quickly. There's maybe some tail end or some full season things, but that's kind of getting down towards the end here. But it's hard to show, like the ears are big enough, I can show you. I have some pictures here though of what some of these bean uh, development stages look like. Um, if you look at this picture, we've got two pods here. Um, one I would say is kind of a good R5, the, the one with the smaller beans, and if there's a bean inside a pod on one of the top four nodes that would measure an eighth inch or bigger, uh, that would be what we'd consider R5. Um, you know, we're quite a ways past our fungicide window, but that's what R5 would be. R6 would be closer to this top pod. 
Uh, I didn't have any R6 pods that I could find just yet, but this one's really close. And basically what R6 is, is when that pod has that, when that bean has that cavity that it lives in completely filled, this pod really shows that we're really close. And so that would be when it's, we're for sure done throwing management practices at it when we get to R6. Again, these pods are something on the top four nodes of the plant, so near the top of the plant, not the bottom of the plant, because there'll be beans that are filling that cavity on the bottom of the plant yet, and not even close to the top of the plant. So that fourth node down is the key to look at as far as staging beans. So again, R6, we're gonna say we're done, we're, we're far enough along. So what's, what's this R5, where a lot of these beans are today, how long is that window? Um, you're probably looking at somewhere in that 10 days maybe to, to kind of get where if these beans are all at R5, you got 10 days worth to consider management yet. Um, with a caveat to that, R5 is typically where you'd start saying, ah, it's gotta be pretty bad before you'd manage it. I have some pictures of some beans here and what they've done since that last rain went through. And I think you see a lot of development that would make me push that management decision back just a little bit more than we normally would. Um, so if you look at this, I've got a picture here of some of this these some clusters of flowers that have recently pollinated. Um, there's a lot of bean potential there. Those beans saw an opportunity that it had some more nutrient availability because it got some moisture and it all of a sudden decided, hey, I can still add some more yield potential. So you can see a couple of clusters of new pods here that are developing. Um, and even the top of this plant, you can see there's still even some flowers here uh, that are still trying to go. So if we see that, which we do see in quite a few fields, I'm gonna push that management decision back maybe a little bit more than I normally would because there's a lot of yield potential in those late developing flowers and pods. And if we can keep those happy, we're probably gonna gain the yield potential to pay for our management practices. Again, I say we're past the fungicide window. Anytime if you're in the air today with planes uh, spraying spider mites, that's probably the main target we're fighting right now. I haven't really seen much for aphid development, but there is some spider mites that are really starting to take off in some fields. It's well worth having a foliar feed in there because these beans are trying to do a lot. They're filling grain, they're even finishing pollinating some flowers yet, and you can see a lot of this early pod development still starting to go. So those beans are really busy. A little bit of a boost to foliar feed is probably well worth the money and especially with the commodity prices we have today. So that's kind of what we're looking for as far as staging this crop. Where we're at in a lot of cases today, there's extremes on both ends. There's probably some doe corn out there on some earlier planted faster ground. Um, there's probably some, you know, that's just tasseling on some late planted after cover crop stuff, but this is a bulk of where we're at. So just thought I'd make mention of that. We're uh, generally, we're done by now, but with things the way they are, the late rains, and like I say, spider mites, when they come in, they can really start to raise havoc, and we get back to these hot weather patterns, they, they just seem like they're continuing to expand, so I want you to be aware of that. So with that, that's this week's Field Friday segment, and we'll see you next week.